A viewer drove from another state to sell me a beautiful, super high-end, super rare collection of video games. He even brought some crazy rare surprises that I'll probably never see again. Dude, it is the best looking copy I have ever come across. That is beautiful. So Dan reached out to me, he's a viewer, and we've been in contact for a couple weeks, and we ended up coming to a deal on a beautiful box of rare games. There's literally thousands in value. The average value per item is over $100, so that means there's probably a lot of rare games, but I also want to see if there's a direct correlation between rarity and value or if it's a mix of factors. So one of those games that was in the box was Pocky and Rocky. Now this game brings back a lot of memories because this game is actually what really sparked me collecting all of these games that you see around you. This is my collection. So I've been reselling and collecting for 20 years. My collecting really began about 12 years ago when I bought this game from a friend in high school. He brought over his collection of games. He had the entire Mega Man X series. He had other amazing items. He had Pocky and Rocky, and they're right here. These are the original ones that I bought. Pocky and Rocky 1 and Pocky and Rocky 2. Now both of these are extremely rare, sought after games. Pocky and Rocky 2 even more so than the first one. And I remember even 12 years ago when I looked these up, I think that, you know, this the first one might have been like 50 to $75. I don't know how far back price charting goes. And then this one was over $100. And I couldn't believe it because I'd never heard of them. I didn't know what these games were, you know, as a kid who just played popular games growing up. And I was curious, you know, are these games good? Like, what's the story here? Pocky and Rocky, I actually played through it. So this game is an example of one that is rare and it's fun. I would imagine that the one-two punch being rare and fun are the reasons for this one being valuable. It was really cool. It brought back a lot of memories to find it in the wild, kind of in the wild, in this collection. Let me know what the first game that you found was that maybe sparked video game collecting for you. Dude, I know you like these. I almost was hesitant on these, man. Yeah, those are nice. I mean, like, mint, mint. Yeah, I'm talking wow. disc, everything. Dude, this one even has the stickers in it. Wow. That's pristine, amazing. yeah. Yeah, and the disc. I mean, everything you're gonna find. That's amazing. Yeah, just a little fuzzies. Yeah, know? that's it. But yeah, I mean, that stuff come right off. That's they're amazing. They're super clean. Super clean. Yeah, it's like you can still feel the glossiness. <laughs> oh yeah. That's awesome. Diving in a little bit further to what makes video games valuable, whether it's rarity or how good the game is or other factors, we got NCAA Basketball 2K3 here. A lot of people might not know that this game exists. For GameCube specifically, this one had about 5,000 copies released and is therefore incredibly rare, especially to find in complete condition. I think the value on this one is strong, about $250, give or take. We can put up a screenshot, but the game I have behind it is Gotcha Force. That one probably had a higher print run than this one here, but is worth about three times as much. And part of the reason is this game is actually kind of interesting and good and holds up pretty well and has a cult following. It's by Capcom, whereas a sports game that's like almost 20 years old certainly doesn't have that much draw to play it. It is simply rare. So instantly I see a game I've never had and that is Contra Force. Very rare game on the Nintendo. Funny thing about this game, it's horrible. This game is awful. Nobody likes it. It's horrible. It's horrible? Yes. <laughs> it's not even considered a Contra game. It's a terrible game. Okay. The game plays bad. It doesn't feel like Contra. That being said, it is the most valuable Contra game. I mean, that's another weird it's a, factor. It's a consider. classic example of rarity is like the only reason this game is valuable and because probably because it has name recognition in Contra. The original Contra is probably still known as the best. Yes. It is in my opinion. Yes. It's a good and one. this one is known as horrible. This is a classic example of rare, not good. So that's why I've never heard of it. it, it uh, but it's one of the more valuable, it's the most valuable. Huh? It is the most valuable. This is, this is kind of both here, rare and good. Mm-hmm. Bucky O'Hare. This game is widely known as a good game. It's kind of like Mega Man, side-scrolling shooter type of game. This game, it's also rare and it's good. And I think these might have similar values. We'll have to put side by side with Contra Force and Bucky O'Hare. But if you're asking me which game I would want for the collection. Contra. No. <laughs> definitely gonna be Bucky O'Hare. That being said, I do already have this one and I might still add this to the collection because it's a good conversation piece. Bomberman 2. All, all the uncommon ones. <laughs> yeah, they're all hard hitters. Man. Yes, they are. There you go. So they make a Super Nintendo version of this? Yes. Yeah. I, so I think this was late release and they put it out for both. Futurama for PS2. Awesome to find this one in this collection. It's gone up substantially in value. And this one's kind of interesting. This one also came out for the original Xbox. But there's a pretty good value disparity. PS2 
comes in strong on this one uh, compared to Xbox, there can be certain games that are on just various systems that are worth more for one or the other. I remember when this, not even too long ago, was like a probably a $60 game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the quarantine. Really man. big one. Yeah. So what's special about this one? Just the last one they made or? It's the last in the series, yeah. And sometimes there can be a trend of a game being valuable when it's the last of its kind on a system. So this is Dot Hat Quarantine Part 4. This game is valued over $300 now, which is crazy. So sometimes that can factor in. You got like Pocky and Rocky 2 versus 1, Mega Man X3 versus X1, for example. Those ones are worth way more. It's not true in every case, like Mega Man 6 on NES isn't worth as much as 5 or 1, but sometimes the last of its kind in a series can be the one that seems to stand apart. And if you line them up on the spines, they, they have that artwork. That yeah, oh. makes something here. I can't remember what it makes. That's, yeah. that's quite the, the foresight to We need to, to, we need to get that. the full picture of that. But, but yeah. I've got two and one back at home, but it, it just, they're just not as valuable as those. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just wanted to bring you the hard hitters like you wanted. Yeah, so, I appreciate it. Yeah. I've seen you guys in those videos, man. You guys like loading up trunks full of this stuff. You're like, yeah, it was $2,000. I'm like, man, I'm bringing the salt mall box. I'm like, I'm over that. <laughs> yes, I'm I know. over that. Plus, yeah. we haven't even got to the smaller you, box. You bring the heavy. Yeah, no, we got to get to the smaller I, box. I have a feeling you're going to add a lot of this to your collection. <laughs> Some of it for sure. Well, that's the thing. That's what I'm hoping for with this smaller box because I started mm -hmm. to think, man, it's either for a collection and it's just going to always go up, they'll never go down or nothing yeah and then also just to have in the collection when you find specimens i guess you call them that are that good of condition or yep. nice you want to just hang on to those we sealed the deal on the first box of stuff a little bit over three thousand dollars but dan mentioned that he was going to bring a smaller box that packs an even bigger punch and that box blew my mind so i'd have what he's going to show i <laughs> I'm speechless to say that it's better, much better than the stuff we just saw. And then you said you have another box. I do. Small box that goes a long ways right there. <laughs> Small, smaller and worth more than that whole box. <laughs> what? The guide. Dude, not oh only the goodness. guide, but I have never seen a guide this mint. <laughs> He's oh got my all. gosh. Kuan, I was talking about that one, Willow Bros. Love the hell. That sealed? Condition. No, or, but still has oh, this. Yeah. Got that on wow. it. Yeah. This one was sealed. The guy just opened it one time to play it and say he played it. And I wish I'd have caught him before that because I was like, don't. <laughs> yeah, right. But he did. Oh. Yeah. He played it one time and then sold it to me. That's wow. kind of the big and four right there. I've had it. I don't think you'll, I don't think unless it's sealed, you're going to find a better mm -hmm. condition copy of Beautiful. that game. Yep. Whew. That's a big one. It's going through your head. <laughs> like, let's make a trip to the bank. <laughs> Solo to Robo Seal. Yep. I have never seen boxes this clean and nice. I'm talking like grades of 9.9. Nine. Beautiful. Ooh. Yeah, that, that looks. You, you tell me if you rush. disagree, but. Yeah, that's. I don't even want to touch it. I'm nervous. It's pretty crisp. That's nice. And they're all. Th these are both like that. Like here, I'll open the day Dave Day Dream Dreaming Davey. Davey, yeah. What you, the heck is that? Yeah. yeah, I don't even know if I have seen that one. Definitely not complete. It's, it's it's like it was brand new. It's like it was just open. But look at that too, yeah. Chase. I'm That's, telling you, yeah. man. Dude, it's beautiful. beautiful. So yeah. the first few games that I looked at from the surprise box were these mint condition NES completed box games. You've got Zelda 2, The Adventure of the Link, Double Dragon 3, and a very unique one, Daydreamin' Davey. Now these he got from a game store. They all must have come from the same collection because they are all near mint, phenomenal condition. And he felt those probably shouldn't use the price charting value for their uh, actual value. And I felt that was reasonable. So we went on to eBay, found comps with just absolutely beautiful condition boxes and use those as our baseline instead of price charting. I ended up sealing a deal on these three separately. And then, then we had to throw in this Nintendo DS Radiant Historia because the game on the inside is sealed. So we sealed a deal on these four all together, paid my percentage based on their more realistic values, and then we had to talk about the absolutely insane stuff from this second batch. Yeah, we at least got to see them, right? Like yeah. <laughs> The, the panic and, and restaurant this, is... And this box, dude, I'm telling you, is pretty close to those. It's got a few things. And I was almost going to take Goo Gone and get that little sticker residue off because I could. Yeah. But I was like, you know what? For authenticity, it could have been a KB Toys one or something. At this point, there was one item that Dan was bringing. And that game was Panic Restaurant for the Nintendo NES. Complete in box. 
This is a crazy game. This is a top 10 grail type complete in box game to have. I've had the cartridge for a while, but I want it complete. He gets it out, show me, shows me the condition. We kind of talk about the story behind it. I tell him I want it. I ask him how much he wants for it. He names his price and my heart sinks. Um, his price is way too high for me. I had a price in my head, he had a price in his head. They're too far apart. There was just a sold comp on eBay that went for $3,500. That one is an absolute outlier for the real value of this game. I would say the value is probably closer to $1,800, $2,000 on a good day. The price that he mentioned, he was firm on it. He knew what he had. I respect it. The asking price was fair. That being said, I was hoping for a little bit of a deal. So unfortunately, we had to pass on this one and I was really bummed. We had to just agree to move on from it and go to the next stack of games. If you want to see us go back, meet up with him later, try to seal a deal on that Panic Restaurant, please comment down below. I'd be interested to see if you guys are interested and see if we can somehow seal a deal. That being said, there was still one other game that he didn't really tell me about that he was bringing. And this is the most beautiful copy. It could be the most beautiful copy in the world for all that I know because the box, the cartridge, the manual, is pristine and it is incredibly rare. Uh, I am telling you, this it. is the most mint other than sealed I have ever, ever seen. Ooh. Even on eBay. Wow. No, please look. Just look at the box and then I'll open it and show you. Dude, it is the yeah. best looking copy I have ever come across. That is beautiful. And it was from that same batch. That guy, whoever brought that in the Mega Amazing. Replay, had all of them. That's definitely legit too. Yes. No doubt about it. Metal Storm. Now this game is a game that I do have. I have it cartridge and manual. Picked it up about five, maybe seven years ago at a garage sale for like five bucks. Insane score. Stoked to have it in the collection, but the one that he brought puts this thing to absolute shame and it's complete in the box. So why is Metal Storm a rare game? Is it an instance of late print or it, is it? it is, I believe it's a combo of the three. It's, it is a later it's one. late print, it's so rare know, and it's good. A right? legit box with the, you always tell with the hang tabs, wow. the numbers on yeah. there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it could be it's a reproduction good. box if not. The cartridge, man, it doesn't get much more gem thing. than that, dude. Wow. The, the man, I didn't even know I came with a poster. There's the manual and a poster. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> a game like Metal Storm in this condition, there's really not a lot of information to judge the value on it. We've got one sold comp. We've got just a couple listed. We really don't have any in this condition that have sold recently. So it's really hard to put a value on these kind of almost one of a kind type of collectibles in video games or in other collectible industries. So... I had to call an expert. I feel like I'm at Pawn Stars. You're about I, to I, was, I was just about to expert. say, like, <laughs> if we were Pawn Stars, this is our, we got yeah, a buddy, we got a buddy. Minutes, Rick. Go yeah. ahead, Eric. Yeah. 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 Come over. <laughs> yes, yeah. but it is the mintiest uh, box that I've, you know, like just pristine uh, NES box here. The price we're looking at is 650 and I think that's that's bottom dollar. It, yeah, like it's, yeah, it's beautiful through and through. Cartridge, uh, poster, manual, box. There's uh, really no issues on it. All right, so what did you just say? Say it again. It's probably a good buy. <laughs> it's, it's probably a good buy. No all, right, all right. So 650 is officially my top and best offer on Metal Storm, but Dan still really isn't sure and has to think about it. And for the record, I totally respect that he has to think about this offer. It's a crazy rare game, and you're probably not going to find another one in this condition. I think Maybe. I think my all-in offer, respectfully, would be 420. Can we mean the middle man at 450? If you if you do 450 on this, if I do that, then I would want that for 652. And and I have to do it then. Okay. You gotta do it. Alright. Deal. Deal. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it, man. No go they're going to do a good on. Yes indeed. Games, games, games. So this game right here is definitely going into the collection. It's gonna be a prized piece in the collection. The condition is just absolutely insane. This was an absolutely beautiful collection and hopefully I can use the profits to be able to add this beautiful gem into the collection for free. That's actually how I built this entire thing in high school, college, and beyond. Well gentlemen, uh, really appreciate your it was really nice meeting Skyward, you. Skyward, you as well. Yep. Thank Chase, you. I appreciate you. Man. Good to meet you. <laughs> nice Olivia. to meet you as well, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Finally in person. He's a nice guy.
He is a really nice guy. Dan, shout out to you. Olivia, you too. You guys are awesome. Thanks for making the trip. Beautiful collection. So this right here is the beautiful collection that we got. On average, these games are valued over $100 per. You got crazy rare NES games. Rockin' Cats in beautiful condition. Mega Man 1 in 5. We've got Bartle Toad's Double Dragon. Insane, insane to find that one. Ninja Gaiden 3's in there. Bomberman 2. These are all games that if you find them one off at a garage sale or something, you're celebrating for a month. We just got all of these in one collection and I'll be celebrating for how long do we have to celebrate? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but we did get Star Trek complete in box and who knew it actually features Mark Zuckerberg. There's also six beautiful DS games in here, including ones like Pokemon Black 2. You got Castlevania, Dawn of Sorrow. All of them are complete and in mint condition. Then these PS2 games, like this is a stack of PS2 games that you wanna see. All of the Xenosagas, including the third one, that's the best one. Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And then stuff like Clock Tower 3, Eternal Poison. It's nothing but glory. This collection was beautiful. I paid up for it. The total deal ended up coming to 5,520 bucks. I paid heavy to get some heavies. I'm very thankful. Dan, thank you for making the trip. It's a beautiful collection. If you wanna see another video where we bought 300 GameCube games in a collection, check that video out here. And until then, we'll see you guys next time. Marvel dude. Chase after the right price.